Every Tuesday morning, when the air is fresh and the sun barely above the horizon, a special train of vans comes from the coast to the town just outside Allen's yard. It had been Herbert's job of late, but with Sir Ralph away being fixed, he had been pulling the fast passenger trains instead. It was therefore down to Stephen to pull the goods train, along the branch line and to the local towns and villages. When it arrived, early that morning, Stephen and Alan were still asleep, while Hawk was busy arranging the yard. Hawk arranged the train and left it for Stephen to take once it had been loaded. Of course, the goods manager had forgot that Herbert was not pulling the train and had Hawk add extra vans onto the already heavy train. Herbert had already left with the morning stopping train, so there was no chance of re-rostering the engines. Stephen buffered up to his train. Goodbye, Hawk, he called. I'll see you this evening. And Hawk watched as he puffed away, hardly struggling at all. This was because the goods siding is on a downward slope, so the weight of the train was not on Stephen just yet. Presently, Stephen came to the hill and found his wheels slipping and his pistons gasping. It's never been this bad before, he gasped to his driver. This train is so heavy. And before he could do anything about it, he had stopped on the hill, panting heavily. The guard immediately telephoned for help, and Stephen's driver carefully backed them down to the bottom of the hill and into a siding. Stephen, grateful for the rest and the drink, was worried. What happens if I do that again, he said. Won't happen again, said his driver. We're getting a banker this time. They waited for another train to pass, which turned out to be Herbert's stopping train. As he passed, he whistled loudly to them. Go it, Stephen, he called out, and then, pissed and snorting, Herbert was gone. Presently, Stephen's banker arrived, in the shape of a very worried-looking western engine. Stephen was glad to see Hawk, who explained about the mix-up. It seems the great western way let you down, Hawk said miserably. Stephen laughed. My old wheezing cylinders and clanking side gear let me down, he said. What say you, Hawk? Shall we take this hill together? Aye, Hawk replied, but this time as British railway engines. Stephen whistled to Hawk, Hawk whistled to Stephen, and the heavy train began to climb the hill. Hawk pushed and puffed and puffed and pushed, and steam bursting from his cylinders helped Stephen over the top and down into the tunnel the other side. As they puffed wearily out of the tunnel and stopped at the level crossing, there was a loud whistle, a rush of wind, and Alan had rushed past them with the midday express. That evening, in the shed, Alan heard all about it. Well, he did make up for his mistake, he said to Stephen. That takes real guts, so he can't be all bad. Stephen smiled. He was so tired, he fell asleep. Alan suppressed a laugh and simmered. Is he okay? Hawk asked. He'll be fine, Alan said with a smile. So, I heard you did well today, little Weston. Hawk bristled. Little? But he saw Alan laughing again. You're okay, great Weston, Alan said. So what's Swindon like? Hawk forgot to be cross. It's really big. Lots of engines, everywhere. And you have to wish really loudly to be heard sometimes, he said. And the two engines talked into the night. One Weston, one Eastern, but both resoundly British. <laughs>